Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to Newbrit Workshop. I thought I'd better give you a quick idea of what's going on because I'm about to start a new project and it's going to take me a little while before I complete it. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to be quite busy. Now, one or two people have mentioned the music on my channel and they said it's about time I had a change. Well, so what I've done is I've gone out and bought a keyboard. <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, um, I've decided uh, to build a cabinet. Uh, I've done the, the drawings now, uh, and uh, it will basically be a set of legs, and there'll be an enclosed area at the top uh, in which the keyboard will sit. I'm gonna make all the framing out of maple, and I've uh, cut it all to uh, dimension now, but not to length. Uh, and then this is gonna be veneered. Anyway, overall the uh, keyboard stand or keyboard cabinet uh, is going to be quite an interesting project because, uh, for example, this is the lid of the, that opens up when you want to play the keyboard. Uh, I've buried wires in here um, and uh, that's for the LED lighting that I'm putting in. So uh, it's going to be quite interesting. It's going to involve so many different things and I'm sorry that it's going to take me a while before I'm able to release a video about it. Never mind. I thought it might interest you, a sort of historical note. Um, it must have been three years ago, I was doing a test of a jigsaw and I used a great big piece of maple uh, to cut through the jigsaw. And this is that, or part of that piece of maple. And you can just see at the end here where I was cutting it with the jigsaw. And these pieces uh, have come from uh, this and uh, there's still a good chunk of it left. I'm really pleased with that, so I'll just uh, true that up on the uh, planer now and uh, it'll be ready to cut to size. Oh, uh, one thing I uh, should mention, uh, Axminster just sent me uh, a couple of samples of uh, new tape rules they're doing. Uh, this is a five metre class one um, and that means it's uh, their most accurate. I'll put the figures on the screen for you. Uh, and that's in both uh, metres, uh, metric and uh, imperial. Uh, and the other one is an 8 metre class 2. Uh, again, you'll see the figures on the screen. A uh, slight difference with this one is it has the uh, markings on the reverse. Now that's really useful uh, if you want to lay this down uh, on a surface uh, and, and mark uh, directly from the side of the rule. Now the only thing I'll criticise with this particular rule is that the uh, hooked end will hook over that way uh, which is the way we're all used to, but when you want to use these excellent markings on the reverse, it doesn't. And so that, that's a bit of a pity. Uh, but I, th I think they do do one with the, uh, the double hook. My old one, which I bought from Axminster a long time ago, this is a, um, a vice versa, it calls itself. Um, now that, that has the writing on both sides uh, and it's got the double hook. Uh, and so that's pretty, pretty neat. Now I've been trying to do something uh, uh, which included these things. These are called Grip It. They're a type of uh, connector for uh, fixing through plasterboard walls and making a strong connection. They really are good. I bought these from Screwfix uh, a little while ago when I was anticipating doing some work for one of the family. Um, and I want to do a video about that, but the actual job went away, so I, I didn't end up doing it. I then thought I'd uh, include it with uh, something about uh, detectors, you know, stud detectors, etc. Every one I've ever bought is absolute rubbish. Uh, and I just would like to do something about some decent ones. But that too uh, fell through. Uh, but anyway, these Griffith things uh, I know are really good. Uh, I've got one criticism though. Uh, when I bought these from Screwfix, uh, it says on here what sizes of drill uh, you've got to drill through the plasterboard. Uh, but Screwfix didn't sell any of these uh, flat. Uh, uh, bits that uh, one, one buys uh, in the right size. I wanted one which was 16 mil and 18 mil. Of course, they still sell off the old uh, imperial sizes or rounded up imperial sizes, not those. So you buy those from Screwfix, but you can't get the drills, which is a bit of a shame. And very kindly, uh, Griffit themselves sent me these two, uh, but <laughs> I haven't used them yet. For the keyboard cabinet, uh, it's going to have a lid. Actually, the lid will have a, a return piece here. Um, and I don't want that lid to go bang when it shuts. And so I wanted some soft close stays. Uh, and uh, so 
um, I contacted a company called Eurofit here in the UK and they very kindly sent me samples of uh, a product they do uh, which is a heavy duty toy box stay. I fitted them here in this test rig uh, and the reason I built the test rig was I wanted to check just how strong they are. Now uh, these, uh, these are the uh, strongest ones that you can get in this country as far as I'm aware and uh, they will not, they're not quite specified up to the weight of my lid. However, I've done a test and I used a couple of clamps on this board. I, I weighed it and I've weighed the material I'm making my lid from. And um, it, it will close with just a slight tap at the very end, but not a bang. And that's what I'm trying to stop. I don't want it to go bang when it closes. But these are the toy box stays from Eurofit. And I, when I do the videos on the um, a keyboard uh, cabinet, uh, you'll see how those are fitted and so on. Now if you're ever in Germany and you get the opportunity to go to a uh, DIY store, it's not really DIY, it's a building supplies, uh, called Hornbach, uh, then you really must go. They have everything. If you want to build a house, you go there and get everything you need. If you want to uh, build a kitchen cabinet, you can get everything you need. If you want a hinge, if you want a, uh, a fuse for a particular type of light, whatever it is, they've, they've got it. And the store I went into, in fact, I went into two, one in Landau in Germany, which is where their headquarters is, and another one in Luxembourg. And they, their stores are enormous uh, and, and quite interesting. They sell products that you just can't get in this country. So if you're traveling in Germany, if you live in Germany, uh, then uh, do take a look at Hornbach and that's why I got this really nice 6mm long drill. Now I've made hundreds of jigs for doing router work over the years uh, and I'm about to make a, a one-off jig. In other words, I'll use it for this one purpose and I probably won't ever need it again. Uh, I've got a requirement to uh, router a channel uh, which is at 15 degrees. So if you imagine I've got my router, uh, it's rather than doing a channel with the writer parallel or on the surface of the piece of wood, uh, I want the writer to be at an angle. And that angle, in my case, is 15 degrees. So I'm making up a gadget. It's, uh, it's very simple. I thought I'd show it to you. Uh, it consists of three pieces of uh, wood which were cut at 15 degrees here, which I did on the capex saw. And uh, here's uh, the block of wood that I was cutting it from. You can see that's uh, had 15 degrees cut from it, um, one, one, one of the three pieces. Um, and then I glued those together. After doing that, I then drilled uh, this hole through uh, the center, and that's where the writer cutter will go. Now you've got to remember when you make something like this, which side the writer is going to be attached, because um, when this hole was drilled, I had this flat on the drill press, and then I drilled that hole through there, which means if I turn it over this way, this hole now is at 90 degrees, and this is the side where I'll mount the writer. So the cutter is going to be uh, at right angles to this surface. Uh, I've got to somehow hold the writer uh, in this jig, uh, and I've also got to have some form of dust extraction. The dust extraction was easy. I just drilled a hole through here. It's 35 millimeters in diameter, uh, and that happens to be just right for my Festool hoses. Now I'm going to be using uh, my uh, small OF1010 writer and it's got this little uh, place here where one can put a, a little uh, foot uh, but the key thing is there's a six millimeter thread there so I've been able to uh, make this up uh, very simply with a scrap piece of metal uh, with a screw going into the wood here uh, and I've got a, a six millimeter uh, threaded uh, uh, connector which will uh, go on there to keep that in place. On top of that I've uh, scribed a line on this piece of wood uh, and cut that on the bandsaw and that's the shape of the one end of the router and I've got this other one uh, which will go here and then between them that will hold the uh, writer in place this way it'll hold it uh, down on this side and I'll, I'll get some other arrangements just to add a bit of uh, uh, security by forcing the writer down on this side somewhere. Now in order to hold it down on this side I've made up this little uh, piece of uh, brass which I've bent very slightly and you probably see that that's just bent a little bit and uh, what I'm going to do now is put it here. 
I have a screw. It goes through a hole there, into there. And that now is holding that writer firmly. I've put a fence here, uh, which is set up just for my purposes for this one-off use. Right, here it goes. I've got my uh, plunge setting set to where I want it to be. So there's the aperture for my LED lighting for the keyboard stand, and that fits absolutely perfectly. So I'm really pleased with that. Everything is just right. Well, I hope this short video has given you a bit of an idea of what I'm up to at the moment. I've got this major project of the keyboard stand to do, and that will produce quite a few videos. Uh, certainly the construction itself, and I will make the plans available to anyone who wants them free of charge, as usual. Um, I'll be doing a piece on the uh, Hafley uh, LED lighting and also on the Eurofit uh, toy box lid stays because I think they're just so good, they deserve it. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Possibly go wrong, hey? Eh?